Hey guys, Fly Girl VSG here coming in with my week 7 post-op vertical sleeve gastrectomy update. I'm going to start with the stats. I started this journey, uh, my two week pre-op diet at 301.2. I weighed in the morning of surgery at 291.8. I weighed in last week at 259.2. And I weighed in this week at 256.4 for a loss this week of 2.8 pounds and a total loss of 44.8 pounds. So I'm super stoked about that. Super stoked. Um, it is my time of the month, so I was expecting um, that to not look so good. And I've also been indulging a little bit more in the last week. Um, I had my first glass of wine, and then the next day I had a second glass of wine, another glass of wine, like just one glass, but I measured it out. It was like five ounces, which was more than I thought it was going to be. Um, on my first glass of wine, I did not get, I felt a little tipsy, which was, you know, obviously after one glass is kind of weird, but um, then I fell asleep. <laughs> I just passed out on the sofa and fell asleep. So the second night, um, I didn't have any effect. I didn't feel drunk or buzzed or anything. So it was nice to be able to enjoy the wine and not worry about being totally trashed. So that was good. Um, today I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, one, I've been meaning to talk about hunger. And I also want to talk about how I made the decision to get this surgery. So um, just real quick about hunger. I'm hungry a lot and I was not expecting to be hungry for like a long time. So I'm, I'm a little, sorry, fix my hair. Um, a little disappointed in that. Everyone that talked to me prior was not talked to me, but like in the forums on the Facebook and even the staff at the, um, weight loss clinic, they were like, oh yeah, you'll have to remind yourself to eat. Um, you won't feel hungry. You'll have a reprieve from hunger for a while. Um, you know, all that stuff. So I was like, great, I'm excited. So why that disappoints me is, um, hunger, my food issues can be summed up into two things. One is volume because I grew up around volume. My family only knows how to cook for like 5,000 people. So, you know, we were fed and that's how some of especially my mother shows how she loves you is that she cooks for you and she keeps giving you food even when you say no 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 so on the other hand though I was I think I'd mentioned this previously I was put on a very restrictive diet when I was 11 um, about 600 calories to lose weight even though I wasn't I mean I was bigger than the other girls but I wasn't fat um, by any means and at least now looking back you know I was told differently so I believe differently but, um, so hunger, uh, causes me to panic. And when I get too hungry, I, I think this is true for a lot of people. When you get too hungry, you'll eat whatever. Um, but when I get too hungry, it triggers something deeper in me that really makes me want to eat whatever. It really makes me want to eat any junk I can get my hands on. Those are the times that I end up going to Carl's Jr. Or I end up getting four sushi rolls and eat them to myself. Or... Whatever, I go to get wings and I get 18 wings and so six or nine wings, you know? So hunger freaks me out on an emotional little person inside issue. Um, so I'm a little... <laughs> about feeling hungry. I really thought that I would have, um, I would have some months where I wouldn't have that. And so... You know, all the staff, everybody told me, uh, you know, or was saying, I'm never hungry, I da 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 And now I'm hearing, now that I'm kind of complaining about it, they're like, oh, yeah, it's normal. It's totally normal that you're hungry. And I'm hungry pretty consistently every three or four hours. And I started therapy back again today. Um, so he told me to kind of play with that, that, like, to come to terms with the fact that nothing bad is going to happen to me if I stay hungry. That I do not have to eat every two hours if I do not want to. That every three or four hours is just fine. Um, and, and to experiment with that because maybe it's water, maybe I'm hungry, but you know, I've also noticed that I feel hungry and I drink some water and I'm fine. So it's been, um, some interesting thought process in my mind about around the issues of hunger. And I know where they come from, I think, but you know, when you're hungry, you can't avoid it. And granted, I've not been super over hungry and been unprepared, so I didn't have to make any food choices that were super poor. But, um, well, and I still don't have to. I mean, you know what I'm saying. But um, I didn't feel led to do those things or motivated. But 
who's to say later, you know, I'm just, it scares me a little bit. I thought that I would have six, eight, nine, twelve months without a lot of hunger that I could um, navigate through this a little bit easier, but nothing about this has been all that easy, so it is what it is. Um, I went to a support group at the hospital that I had the surgery at yesterday through the clinic um, that I had the surgery at, and I'm not sure I'll go again, but they did talk about acceptance, and I can't fight the fact that I'm hungry, so I just have to accept it and listen to my body and make the choices that are going to get me the most successful results um, that aren't depriving. I mean, I can still have wine and popcorn and chocolate, and I don't have to have fast food. I can incorporate those things in my diet with moderation, which leads me to another thing I'm going to talk about, which is being grateful for the restrictions. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So the second thing I wanted to talk about um, was my decision to get the surgery. Like, what led me to, to this point? What What happened in my mind that I thought I had to have surgery. And I'm so grateful that, you know, in hearing other people's stories, people sometimes respond to other people saying that they've had weight loss surgery with, oh, you so you took the easy way out, um, or a lot of disapproval. And, and I'm so lucky that I've not had anybody. I've had people express concern, but I've not had anybody say, judge, be judgy about it at all. I've, I've had a lot of acceptance around this, and I've been grateful for that. Um... I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, but, but and, and also, nothing about this has been easy. Nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, this is just as hard as any other, um, without dieting, I mean, I'm not dieting, obviously, really, I'm just eating um, what I can eat, and I'm eating clean, but um, it's it's been it's been weird. This whole thing's been weird, and it's definitely been hard. So so hearing, you know, other people have that reaction to other people's stories is, is just is sad, and, and I'm so blessed. So I just want to say that right now, that for my friends and family that are watching this, thank you so much for being you, and I love you so, so much. And to my YouTube and Facebook friends that are on here and, and are um, following my story, your support is Im immeasurable as well. So thank you so much. Um, so in terms of how I got to the decision to make have this surgery, and I'll try to cover this quickly, I can't say that I actually ever did. I, I, I'm probably an outlier because everybody I know that ha I've talked to either on Facebook or at support groups or friends who have undergone um, surgery, they've been sure. And I can say that in no time during my pre-op, up until the moment I got to the hospital, even then, I have never been sure that this was the right decision for me. I can honestly say that up until the time I walked into that hospital, I was wondering when I was going to call my bluff. I think what led me to explore this as an option was, and I had thought about this before, and I definitely had thought about this before as an answer, as the, as the miracle cure. Um, and I can say I don't feel that way now. But I never entertained the option too much because... I didn't want the bypass, I didn't want all that reworking of my intestines, and I didn't want the lap band. I didn't want um, a foreign object in my body that I had to maintain. Um, and I respect everybody's right to make those choices, and I know people personally who have both of those. Um, and and that's totally their journey, and I, I commend them for that. But for me, the sleeve sounded like a really good option. Um, because it was simple and pretty straightforward and, and moderately successful comparative to, you know, gastric, I understand, is the most successful, the lap band being the least successful in the long term. So the sleeve seemed, sounded pretty good. Um, and I thought about it before, but the sleeve had never really come into my realm, and I was like, I can't do either of these other two. So when I f finally heard about the sleeve, which was literally just a few months ago, um, that's when I started to really consider this. And also... I called my insurance company, and several years ago when I was thinking about it, my insurance didn't cover it. This time they did. So I was thinking, well, I don't really see any reason why not to do it. I have, I am a paleo eater. I am lean and green. I am high. I don't believe in low-fat food. I have very, very strong opinions on the type of food a person should be eating, or I should be eating. 
I am a whole food proponent. I try to limit my processed food intake. I do love eating out. But even then, you know, I try really hard to make smart decisions. Um, and and I, I think, you know, it's volume for me more than it is food quality. So, but I have tried everything. I've done HCG, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, um... Optifast. Oh my God, I tried Optifast last year. What a nightmare. And I had really a hard time, a lot of dissonance in my head about all the high fructose corn syrup and, and hydrogenated bullshit in those shakes. And I don't put that stuff in my body on a day-to-day -day basis. So it was really hard for me to do that and I, it didn't last very long. So I can't say that there was one definitive answer, one definitive moment, um, like a lot of people. I think circumstances just came together and and I followed the path, kind of out of curiosity. And then I ended up coming out of the hospital being, what the shit balls did I just do? <laughs> so I don't, and, and a month ago, if someone had asked me, would you do it again? I wouldn't have said no, but I couldn't have said yes either. I can say that for sure. But someone asked me last night if I would do this again, and even though I was throwing and retching, throwing up and retching for the first nine days, and even though I had to go from mushy foods back to liquids and then back to mushy foods again, even though I'm covered in hives even still, even though my lips uh, are still chapped, um, I would do it again at this point. I am really grateful for that restriction. When I'm eating, I am, cannot go fast. I cannot eat too much. Um, if I honor this tool the way it's meant to be honored or used it, use it the way it's meant to be used, there's no way I can't be successful in dropping the excess weight. And all I want to be able to do is be active. I don't really care if I look good. I think I look all right. You know, I ha I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty happy in my life. And I'm blessed because of that. But I want to be able to be more active than my body will allow me to be at 300 pounds. So, you know, my story is a little different in the fact that I was never sure and I, I really thought I'd back out at the last minute. I'm really actually kind of in shock about all of this. I'm in shock I did it. I'm in shock I've lost almost 45 pounds in nine weeks, I mean, including the two-week pre-op diet. And I'm in shock at um, the things I have and haven't had to deal with in regards to thought process. I have had some head hunger, um, but it's not been as bad as I thought it was. I definitely still love food. People on, uh, some people have experiences where they just don't like food anymore. Nothing tastes good. I definitely do not have that problem. I love food and everything settles pretty well. So that's to me kind of a good and kind of a bad thing. But it is what it is and I'm going to accept it and that's, I think I said this already in the support group I went to last night. We talked a lot about acceptance, and, and I think that's a really good rule of thumb. There's nothing I can do to change the fact that I feel good when I eat food. There's nothing I can do to change the fact that food tastes good. There's nothing I can do about the fact that I feel hungry. There's nothing I can do about any of that. All I can do is put nutrients in my body, try to keep away from processed foods, move my body on purpose, which I'm working on, and um, and let my body do the rest. Unlike every other time before, I really think I have a chance now because of this sleeve, um, who I've nicknamed Betty, by the way, so we can just call her Betty, um, to, to, to have the life fully what I want, to be able to get up on a Sunday morning and go for a hike, um, instead of sit around and drink coffee and eat food, you know, because my body wouldn't let me go up a hill. So I'm really, really excited about those things, and and I just thought I'd share my story on this, and I'm running on to 15 minutes, so I'm going to cut it off. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. Make it a great weekend, and keep it fly out there, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.